Gladstone. I Gladstone, uno dei gruppi più importanti del rock and roll degli ultimi 6-7 anni, hanno fatto due date a Milano, due concerti infuocati. Voi sapete che dal vivo i Clash hanno mantenuto tutta la ruvidezza degli inizi, mentre invece per quanto riguarda i dischi sono andati verso una fusione di suoni molto diversi. Questa fusione anche e soprattutto fra rock e politica è al centro di molte controversie, di molte contraddizioni come spesso succede nell'ambito dello show business quando si mischiano soldi a ideali. Bene, sono stati duramente attaccati e criticati da molte persone anche nello stesso giro dei punk negli ultimi anni. I Clash sono venuti non solo per farsi sentire ma ci hanno dato anche un'intervista un po' per difendere le loro tesi. Però tutto questo lo vedrete fra poco. Allora, benvenuto nei camerini del Palazzo dello Sport. Intorno a me la nuova formazione dei Clash che come voi sapete sono se non il più grande, sicuramente uno dei più grandi gruppi della storia del rock. Eh, ve li presento, i due superstiti della prima formazione, Joe Strummer, Paul Simon, and can you introduce the three new members? Guitar, Nick Shepard, drums, Pete Howard, guitar, Vincent White, get him? Benissimo, dopo questa, dopo questa introduzione, Paul Simonon, I, I, I already said that. <ride> allora, prima che cominciamo, prima dopo questa presentazione andiamo invece verso le domande. Ci sono molte cose da chiedere ai Clash perché sono, hanno rappresentato per un gruppo abbastanza controverso negli ultimi anni, però partiamo proprio da lì. Loro uscirono nel 1977, era un momento in cui la scena inglese era decisamente orientata verso il genere punk, poi sono passati molti anni, sono passati 6-7 anni da allora, è molto cambiato in Inghilterra, soprattutto per quanto riguarda suono e immagine, mi sembra che invece loro siano rimasti abbastanza fedeli ai principi di allora, ed è questo che vorrei sapere da Joe. Yeah, it, in England, um, well, what we have is manufactured music. Um, it's very business company orientated. You know, they they can steam it out with their videos and um, production line, and everything is um, quick cult. This week one cult, next week let's have another cult. But it it doesn't come really from any true feeling. Punk was not predicted by any businessman, any any lawyer, the, any record company chief. None of them knew what it was, and there it bears the mark of a true music. And now in London, we're very far from anything like that, a true feeling where people just, it comes out of a spirit. Now it's like 1973 again, very, you know, I expect Emerson, Lake and Palmer to reform <laughs> any minute now. <laughs> Senti, eh, and how, eh, come, come andate d'accordo con l'industria con adesso? Voi avete sempre avuto una relazione abbastanza difficile, avete detto che i prezzi dei dischi non sarebbero mai andati oltre una certa cifra, idem per i biglietti dei concerti, idem per tutto un atteggiamento di fondo. Di questi tempi come va? We cope with it by being independent. Like, if the company is confused, it doesn't know whether we're on this side of them or behind them or in front of them. We just go out and do what like, we, we wanted to play, so we're coming out to play. Mm -hmm. um, it's to have an independent life of your own, that's how you're free of it. Because once they've got you, once you owe them all the money in the world, then they start to tell you this mm -hmm. and wear that and do this and record this, and then you, you can say goodbye to, to any, if you want passion. <laughs> Ecco, a proposito della, della dipartita di Mick Jones, che era un elemento originale del gruppo, voi siete sempre stati un'immagine di gruppo molto precisa, molto compatta, poi improvvisamente uno se ne va o viene licenziato, come mai? How come? Well, Joe, you want to take this one? Yeah, Mick Jones, right? You start off with three of you, like me, him and Mick Jones, right? We was a unit. And then, when one person changes, you have to think, how are we going to do this? You know, first you change, if you've got a good friend, you know, you don't just get rid of your right. friend straight away, you know, it's not like um, anything like that. We worked on him to change him, we had to get him back to how he was, but he, he thought that just because somebody asked him for his, his autograph in a street in a foreign city, it meant that he must be as big as Frank Sinatra, or his head, you know, his head began to go big and big, and that's okay, you know, you can, it's a bit hard to cope with. He couldn't take criticism. Yeah. That's the problem we had. Mm. If he had a difference of opinion in the recording mm. studio, he would not move. He'd be like mm. this. Mm. Whereas me and Joe can have an argument and we reach an understanding between us and with Nick we, could, we reach no understanding. And, and it's okay if your friend's head is growing bigger and bigger, right? And beginning to, to you know, push everyone's head out of the way, right? 
It's okay because you can stroke it back down to size somehow, you know, by saying true things. But when none of your things that you can say are taken mm -hmm. uh, will be understood by your friend, then you begin to realize that there's no way to do it. And how many years, you know, we spend all our energy on this and me and Paul are tired of doing this. And we just see it's time for, a, the time is for a group like Clash to come out and be out there, be out there fighting, not to, no, no more of this uh, psychiatrist couch, you know, when I'm going. <laughs> well, um, well, come on, let me go. It was uh, a long time ago, and Mummy never gave me any sandwiches. Oh, God, oh God, God, Joe, poor Joe. Joe, me, man, say, you know, fuck that. <laughs> or should I say, forget that? <laughs> when look, the spy of us here, we make mm. music. You know, when I go to him, you, you that's rubbish, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't go right. I'll, then, you know, you're with vengeance, I'm gonna stab him in the back, you know, vengeance. He doesn't go like that, he thinks, why is he saying this, you know, and, and we can have a talk about it and get something together. It seems like, what, be friends, you see, a lot of groups, they hate each other, you know. Oh, yeah. Why do you think, you know, we had to get rid of Mick because I'm not going to be like, you know, the police, it's like, one dressing room this big for me, and then <laughs> one for the other guy, and then one for the other guy, and it's like, shh, don't, you know, don't mention each other to each other, you know. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, mm -hmm. you know, what is that? I just don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Buona parte della controversia intorno ai Clash nasce anche da tutta una serie di atteggiamenti che in Italia furono eh, discussi e che tutto sommato forse vale la pena di chiarificare proprio qui. Il particolare, eh, forse il più famoso di questi, era un concerto in cui uno di loro aveva la maglietta delle DR, delle Brigate Rosse. Allora io vorrei chiedere un attimo a, a Joe questo, questa mitologia rivoluzionaria che i Clash in definitiva hanno portato avanti attraverso dei dischi molto precisi, anche come titolo, prendiamo solo Sandinista. Eh, come può essere definita in, in termini di dialogo, cioè come, come la puoi definire? Well, to, to deal with the Red Brigade shirt first, so I was the one who wore the shirt, mm -hmm. and um, we'd been, um, we'd agreed to do a, a free concert in London for the uh, anti-Nazi League, mm -hmm. okay? And um, meanwhile, everyone was going around saying they were really political, they were really radical, and some of the groups on this thing were using the occasion as a music business convention, mm -hmm. okay? They were printing yeah. up, um, say, a radical button, but it would say EMI on it, mm -hmm. you know, and they were passing it out to the march. Okay. And I thought, you know, if you really want to get, um, I thought I'd show these people up, you know, if they really, they were pretending to be radical, but really they just wanted to sell more records with their, their handouts. So I got hold of this Red Brigade shirt and um, I wore it at the thing, but now I realize having been to Bologna and been to um, Turin and had spoken to the people of these cities, they say that um, they feel that it gives the, the left a bad name. Allora, se c'è un messaggio dietro la musica dei Clash in generale eh, da portare ai ragazzi qual è? So to sum up this uh, brief uh, political thing, if, so if there is a message uh, that the Clash want to bring to the kids, what is it? It, you don't, yeah, no, just think for yourself. Like, first, recognize that you've been brainwashed. So therefore, you can't trust your own thinking. Therefore, do some research, you know, find all sides of the argument. Think for yourself, make your own mind up. Don't just follow, a lot of people like to do it the easy way. They hear an accepted, um, uh, accepted statement and they just take that round and, and wave it wherever, mm -hmm. when they need it, they wave it. But it's not a real critical process in their mind, you know. Just think for yourself. I don't care which way you vote or anything even, as long as you give up the drugs and get on with the voting. You know, it, it, if it is a democracy, then why the hell isn't anybody interested? Mm -hmm.